Hello, how are you going? Welcome back. Welcome to day eight. We are doing this thing. Um, just gonna check that we're all good, ready to go on Facebook, but I'm a little bit later today for no reason at all. But I did the silliest thing just before. I was uh, brushing my teeth, getting ready for this life. <laughs> And I wasn't paying attention and I, <laughs> I put hair removal cream in my mouth instead of toothpaste. So that, that, let that be a lesson to pay attention when you're in the bathroom of what you're putting into your mouth. Because if you happen to have hair removal cream uh, out there, you, you could run the risk of thinking that's toothpaste. So yeah, fun stuff. It's a little bit dark today as well. It's been raining like all night, so. Sorry about the lighting, but I like to keep it natural. Um, yeah, because I don't, I don't like fake lighting. But anyway, anyway, I want to carry on and talk about what we're going to talk about today because it's really fun, really interesting, and everyone gets hung up on this. And that is the how when it comes to manifesting anything. But again, we're talking about money. So the how when it comes to manifesting money and how to stop doing that because it is not your responsibility okay i just made a really hot uh, hot chocolate <laughs> so the reason we get hung up on the how is because there is something in us that is telling us that we either don't trust we don't believe that it can happen or we're trying to control it Right, we, we, there's something in us that's, that thinks that in order for it to manifest, we have to take control. We have to put in the action steps to make it happen. And therefore that shows the lack of trust because, oh, this is a whole other conversation, but like when it comes to inspired action, right? Like you are meant to take inspired action if it is inspired. If it's not, then you're forcing it. Then you're moving into masculine energy. Then you're moving in, like if you're a woman and you, operate predominantly in your feminine and that's the most that feels the most natural to you then operating in your masculine is gonna drain the hell out of you when it comes to trying to manifest what you want and we don't want to do that right because if you're like me you're probably a workaholic you probably over have overcompensated with action throughout your life and so it got into this like pattern of feeling like you have to like move freaking mountains to make what you want happen. You have to work your butt off. You have to, like basically it's just you on your own doing this, you against the world. And that's not the, the state we wanna be operating from now. It definitely works for some people, especially masculine energy, they love it, they thrive off it. But when that's not your natural dominant state, it drains the hell out of you and just makes it harder. So we're moving into the receptive energy, the yin energy, the feminine energy of receiving, right? So when you're stressing about the how, you're not in the feminine because you're trying to figure out how it's going to happen and you cannot perceive from that place because it, you are in a limited state of mind thinking about the how, right? And so like I've had little moments this week, very little moments pop up where I'm like, oh, how am I gonna, how's that gonna happen? How am I gonna manifest this? How am I going to get that income for this month? And the minute that happens, what I recommend for you, is, it's what I've also been doing, is to look at it as an opportunity to shift your fear from lack, from fear, from doubt, into trust, into belief, into using this as an opportunity to shift your perception, shift how you think about this, shift from the old way of thinking into the new way of thinking. And so for me, what that has looked like is immediately when the, like the worry about the how comes up, I immediately tell myself the how is not my job, only the what and the why are. The universe takes over the rest, it takes over the how, it takes over the when, it takes over the where, and it even takes over the who, you know, if there's some people coming in as an effect of your manifestation, right? So my job is the what and the why. So. All I have to do is stay in a state of visualizing, of imagining, of feeling the feelings of what I want. That is my job and my job only. And when I receive guidance, 
then I'll take it. But until then, I'm going to sit back in this receptive energy and just feel the feelings and be strongly and dominantly in my feminine energy. But when the fear comes up, that's my opportunity to talk myself back into a more empowering story or a neutral state or back into feeling abundant. It depends like if it's a really um, strong scarcity thought that pops up or it's just like, oh, but what about the how? It's not too, you know, it isn't too charged with negative emotion. If it isn't charged, then I can go straight back to abundant thinking straight away. But if it's like really strong, if it's a stronger scarcity thought, then coming back to neutral is the most important thing because going from feeling deep in scarcity to wildly abundant is just too much of a jump. It's way too much of a jump and it's too overwhelming. So getting back to neutral is the main point. But I haven't been dealing with that this week. Most most of the thoughts have just been really light, really like, Ooh, what, if, what if it doesn't happen? Like how, how am I gonna make it happen? Um, so what I do in a long winded way is I start coaching myself. I start talking to myself. I say, okay, Elise, do you think out of all the people on the planet, you are the only one who doesn't get to receive abundance? Well, no, that's silly. Of course I do. Right, cool. Do you think that the universe would deliberately not want to bring you what you want? Well, no. No, I think the universe is very abundant, very loving, and it matches your energy. So, no, I don't think that. Cool. So, do you think the universe has your back? Yeah, totally. We're working on that anyway, if, even in the moments that we don't. Do you think that the universe has multiple ways and can see all possibilities at all times of how to bring you what you want? Yeah, yeah, more than you? Yep, yep. The universe can definitely see far more than I can with my own mind. Right, so you know then that the universe supports you. It always nurtures you. It has always been there supporting you. It has always had your back. It's always provided for you, even in the moments that you didn't think it was. It has always protected you, always kept you safe. It's always been there, always making sure you are being guided to what you want. So don't you believe that it's entirely possible that you could be deeply financially supported by the universe, even though you can't see the how yet? Yep, I believe that. Cool. Okay. And so I, I go through this, I either journal it or I think it in my mind. I'm noticing that I can I sh can shift a lot better just thinking it. I don't need to write it down. But when I'm really stuck in scarcity, that's when I have to like really process my thoughts and just get it out. But when it's like light, sort of light, little blips, little negative thoughts, I can just go through it in my mind very easily. So that's what I mean, like I talk myself out of worrying about the how and if I was to show you what that looked like as an action, it would be like, okay, here's me worrying about the how, but here's what I meant to do. I meant to give it back to the universe. It's the universe's job. Mine is just to sit here and feel abundant. Here's the how, universe, there you go. So that's what I would look at it like. You are giving it back. And with that action, you feel in your body, you feel like, Oh, okay, weight's lifted. I really don't have to worry about the how. I just have to feel good, follow any inspired guidance that comes up, and that's it. This is really easy. So, if any of you were worrying about the how, that's my little bit of advice on it, okay? So, that's all for me today. It's a quick one. I am heading over to my grandmother's now for afternoon tea. I've got my hot drink already for some uh, baking of hers. I hope she has baked something new today, but yeah. Otherwise, it's ginger crunch. So other than that, if you enjoyed this little tidbit of information or, or got any value out of this, I would love it if you could share it with, with your friends and share any comments or feedback you have in the comments below. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye.